As young activists, we face an extra barrier to being taken seriously and getting our message across. Because people, especially those in power, are all too happy to dismiss us as truants who just want a day after school and make trouble. They do this without listening to what we have to say, acknowledging that we would much rather be at school or that we're campaigning on real issues that impact them too. Deciding to take action and strive for a better world for everyone is a big decision. There are so many ways to get involved. Marching, speaking, sharing resources on social media and so much more. I follow a lot of activists on social media, but in the last six weeks with the murder of George Floyd, the crisis in Yemen, and now the exploitation of workers in Leicester, my feed has exploded with resources and statements from my friends who are students like, just like you and me. Our generation, although stereotyped as lazy and apathetic, is more active than preceding ones. In the last decade alone, Malala Yousafzai has taken activism for education to a new level and been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. 14-year-old Lita Yaroshenko addressed the Ukrainian National Parliament in response to dramatic budget cut on AIDS research. Marie Kopenyi brought the Flint water crisis to international attention. Seven-year-old Bana Alabdeh shone a light on the desolation of Aleppo. Thousands and thousands of young people took a march for our lives to demand gun control in the US. And Swedish teenager Greta Thunberg inspired school street children to go on strike for the climate. I could go on and on about ordinary young people who decided to do extraordinary things because they knew if they didn't, who would? Our jobs as activists are really important. Look at what's at stake with the climate. But to do the best job we can, we need to remember that it's okay to take a break. If you try to throw everything equally into every campaign you're aware of, you'll burn out. You don't have to be marching every day or going to summits all the time. Sometimes signing a petition is enough. Make room for you as well as your causes. Also key is the continuing education of ourselves. Be willing to read and listen and make yourself uncomfortable. All this is important to making us better activists and better people. Education, my, educating myself is what spurred me to become an activist in the first place. If you haven't watched them, I'd highly recommend Emma Watson's Address to the UN on Gender Equality or Hillary Clinton's 1995 Women's Rights as Human Rights speech, as well as pretty much any of her addresses from the 2016 presidential campaign. Third, have confidence in your expertise and your position as an activist. When there is so much vitriol directed towards young activists from the change makers we're trying to reach, it's easy to lose face, faith in the impact our actions have. But remember, you know more than you think and you have every right to be activists. As school strikers and activists, we have formed an amazing community and we will succeed in our goal of creating a green, sustainable future of this planet. I know this because we are a group of thoughtful, passionate, woke people and those are the people who change the world.